Hey guys, welcome to Channel Everything, and today I'm going to show you or do part two of the PrintWrite 3D series for upgrading the print bed. So we're going to be upgrading the power supply in this video because the one that comes with it is only a 60 watt, and that won't be enough for having a heated bed. So this one's just designed for the extruder, and whenever you're going to use a heated bed you want to go an extra 100 to 150 watts because that's what the requirement is and the one I have here is a computer power supply and this is a extra computer power supply I had laying around so first if you're going to use a computer power supply you want to make sure you have a PCI Express connector so I have this little one right here and that will just connect into any of the peripheral ports you could if you wanted to use the 24 pin connector but I didn't want to destroy the power supply and have it not usable if I wanted to put it in a computer again so I have here a 5.5 bullet connector and you can get one with pre or pre wired but basically you just want the positive in the inside and negative on the outside and you can always check that by going to the back of the power supply that came with it and you can see how positive is that inside circle and then the negative is the outside half circle or you could check with the multimeter if you're unsure and then you just want to set everything up and begin soldering so there is another option of a power supply that you can use which is this one that you that is here on Amazon I've seen a lot of people use this kind on um, there are 3D printers, but uh, I don't really trust it. Like, I mean, it has decent reviews, but um, I just rather use a computer power supply because they're regulated and tested pretty well, if you, especially if you use a uh, known brand. But um, this one right here, if you buy this one instead, it's in the description as well. Uh, basically, you just want to connect the wires to um, to the uh, pins right here, so you can see where that these are the positive side and the negative. It's kind of hard to see, but it's right there. So you just want to wire it up like that. And this would actually require no soldering if you had long enough cables. So if you do want to avoid doing as little soldering as possible, then this is definitely an option. But I don't know if I would trust it as much as I would as a computer power supply. So now let's move on to the next step. The next step, we will be taking a bullet connector here, so 5.5, and connecting it to the cable here, which will power, plug into the power supply. So if you look at it like this, make sure you're following it right so you get the right voltage. But I think you, it should be standard for all of them, but you can always check the voltages if you're unsure. So you plug, of course, black to black, red to red, or red to yellow in this case. That's 12 volts. So just follow it like this. So the clip part is right there, and then it's the farthest ones all the way to the right. So you want to make sure you get your heat shrink on there first. Before you solder it completely. So I actually did test this wire out uh, later on and I had problems with it heating up a little bit. So I would recommend going a little bit heavier gauge uh, so that you won't have that same problem. It's really quick. difficult Ooh, it's a little too small of a heat shrink thing So 
And what I like to use, I like to use the back of the soldering gun to stick it on because it doesn't get as hot as the tip does and I don't have a heat gun and I really don't plan on getting one because I don't really solder all that much. So it works, but I really don't care. Just do this other one. It'll be ready to test it out. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just flattening down the point there because the heat shrink I have is a little too small in diameter to fully wrap around so it's a little difficult. If there's any overhanging parts, again, let's go this real quick. But since it's small enough, it doesn't have to be uh, shrunk a lot. So there we go. And then we're ready to test it in, plug it in, see what happens. Alright, so I have here the power supply that I'm going to use. And I'm going to first start off by plugging in. So I actually do also highly recommend you cover up the other ends you're not going to use. Double check your connections to make sure you're yellow to red and black to black. Then you can plug it into any of the SATA peripheral, peripheral slots. And then there's your plug. And so how power supplies work is that they communicate with the motherboard. So what you're going to want to do is actually short out the two pins that turns the power supply on. Otherwise the power supply won't provide power. And basically how that's done is it's a green, a green cable. Let's see if I can... So a uh, green cable right there, and then you can short it out with any ground. So I just have a paper clip uh, bridging the two points. And then I'm just going to hit the switch here. Okay, there we go. So fan, as you can see, turns on because we got it switched there. Then I'm just going to take the multimeter right here. Take so, like I said, positives the inside, and negatives the outside. Let's turn it off first, of course. You get about 12.15 volts, so that's close enough for the 12 volt requirement. That should be good. So now we know. That positive is the inside, and black is the outside. Okay, let's turn that off. Now we're ready to uh, hook up the power. Okay, so the cable um, that is attached to the printer is the opposite bullet connector. So I'm just going to set this on the ground, plug it in, hope it works. Okay, let's see if it turns on. And yeah, you can see the light go, and also the fan up there just went real quick there. But uh, that's pretty much it. So in the next video, I will be making the final connections and showing you how to plug in or where to plug in to what on the motherboard. And that will be it. Uh, thanks, and please subscribe.